from the Cocos Islands, a complete change of culture. We're off to the Gold Coast where we join the two teams. Good morning passengers, welcome to Traveloz Flight 1 to the Gold Coast. This is your captain speaking. Now we're just about to land, so we'd ask you to take your seats. Please fasten your seatbelts, we're expecting a lot of turbulence. This is going to be one hell of a ride. <laughs> <laughs> While our flight experience was luckily only a simulation, we did manage to land safely. And just at first glance, we realised this place we're about to visit will seriously blow our minds. Well, we've made it here to the Gold Coast, a part of Australia that's best described as a 24-hour, 365-day-year nucleus of excitement, which lies on Queensland's far southeast coastline. In fact, there are just so many things to see and do here on the Gold Coast that it would literally be impossible to tick them all off in just one visit. But the Gold Coast offers a lot more than just an intricate array of heart starters and stoppers. The area itself is one of Australia's most ecologically diverse, with over 100,000 hectares of World Heritage listed rainforest and 70 kilometres of open coastline fringed by white sand beaches and picturesque coastal towns. So we're going to start our adventure in the Gold Coast far south at a place called Coolangatta. Coolie, as the locals like to call it, is, as the name suggests, a pretty chilled out place, renowned for its surfing opportunities and laid back lifestyle. Much different to what we're going to experience up there. Living and working in Coolie is pretty nice, pretty laid back around here, eh? just all like surfers and stuff. Friendly people around, real sunny days, hot days, beach, beach weather pretty much, that's the way. It's pretty much around here, you can go out the back, check out the rainforest and stuff out the back. Leaving Cooley behind, we headed north past Burley Heads, another well-known surfing town. Now, they say that the Gold Coast has everything, from nature, sports, shopping, arts, adrenaline and adventure all rolled into one. And we were determined to get every kick out of this place possible. En route to the towering skyline in the distance, we figured we'd get to work straight away. And jumping in a three and a half metre inflatable ball they call a Zorb sounded like a pretty good idea. The idea is simple. You jump inside and you roll down the hill. I can't believe it took him so long to come up with this. Oh, right, let's go! Let's go! <laughs> down the hill we go and with a slightly rough landing we made it safely to the bottom and straight away headed into the thick of the action, surfer's paradise. Well, this is it. The heart of the Gold Coast, surfer's paradise. In amongst this impressive skyline right here lies an electric, pulsating hub, a true blend of cosmopolitan and beach lifestyle. How's this? The Esplanade, which runs along the beach, is a popular place for a walk or a stroll, or a dip if you can. Back off the beach, shops line almost every street. Everything from top brands to discount stores. It's one thing checking out Surfers Paradise from the ground, but given the size of these buildings, the best view of the area has to be up there. This is called Q1, the largest residential building in the world and located right in the middle of Surfers Paradise. At 77 storeys high, it literally towers over the rest of the Gold Coast. To reach Q-Deck, the top of the Q1 building, amazingly it only takes 43 seconds in the lift. That's if you make it. And unfortunately, Tim found out the hard way. Note to self, when in Surfers Paradise, stick in pairs and if you do get lost, head up here to find your mate. No matter which way you get up there, the views are simply incredible. The Gold Coast certainly has its fair share of the biggest and best in Australia, from nightlife to buildings and beaches. However, when it comes to one thing in particular, the Gold Coast is head and shoulders above the rest. That's right, this adrenaline fueled action-packed part of Australia has the largest concentration of themed attractions south of the equator. The only thing left to do is try as many of these theme parks as possible, and that is exactly what we are going to do. The Gold Coast is basically a theme park mecca. Um, we've got the beaches, but up this end of the, uh, the coast, it's really the place where people come in Australia and in the Southern Hemisphere to get their theme park fix. Um, well, a theme park is basically like a hyperactive carnival, bigger and better than your fate, basically. Um, people come in and they jump on the rides and you really get that rush of adrenaline. It, it takes it to another place. First stop on our adrenaline fueled theme park adventure is here, Dreamworld. Now, these guys claim to have the fastest, highest, scariest and most thrilling rides in Australia. Let's go see what they've got. 
I'm not scared at all. Are you scared? Yes! Me too. <laughs> Oh god, here we go. Oh god. I can see my house from here. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> this right here could well be the scariest ride in the whole of Australia. At 119 metres, it's the tallest ride in the southern hemisphere. This is definitely gonna call for a rock off. One, two. Oh! over to Tiger Island, you'll always see uh, tigers and their handlers at play on the island. It's a real interactive facility. Um, people can also have photos taken with the tigers, which is something that you might not get to do anywhere else. You can actually go up and pat a tiger. Just around the corner from Dream World are three more worlds which take on a whole different form altogether. Movie World, Wet n Wild and Sea World. Let's hit up Movie World first. Ever heard of Bugs Bunny? Batman? How about Superman? Of course you have. Well, we've come here to hang out with some of our all-time favourites, the immortalised legends of the big screen. That's right, we're at Movie World. This place takes all the magic from the movies and brings it to life. If you're a Batman fan, love Bugs Bunny, or into the wild, wild west, then take your pick. Give it in! Where's the weapon? Batman! The rides are great! Walking through the streets of Movie World, it really feels like you are transported right into the set of a Hollywood blockbuster. And when you come across characters like this, it certainly makes you blink twice. Are you really Marilyn Monroe? Of course I am. Pleasure yeah, to no, meet you. What's your name? Tim Shreddy Travelers. Oh. Um, maybe me and you could go out and get some fairy floss or some popcorn sometime. Mm. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> And of course, no theme park is complete without a couple of hair-raising rides thrown in for good measure. Add a theme to each ride and you certainly have a thriller. This is Batwing, rocketing willing punters straight into the air with more G-force than a rocket ship. And this one, Superman, the fastest roller coaster in the Southern Hemisphere. Flying along in true Superman style, this ride takes a scenic train trip to a whole new level. However, with an average of 300 sunny days per year, it gets pretty hot hooning around on rides all day. So why not mix it up a bit? We seem to have found the answer. Wet and wild, the name says it all. While the last theme park was all about the speed, big dips and heart-wrenching drops, maybe you're asking yourself, how can it get any better? Well, these guys have got the right idea. Add a bit of this stuff right here. Well, this has got to be the ultimate backyard swimming pool setup. Complete with every type of inflatable toy you want, there are just countless ways to get wet. It's just a matter of which rush you want as to which way you go. Goodbye. <laughs> There's the kamikaze, plunging almost vertically into a wicked half-pipe slide. This is not for the faint-hearted. The tornado, launching down a 15-metre platform into the middle of a whitewater storm. The Mach 5, which sends thrill seekers screaming straight down the line by themselves. The final stop in our adventure through the theme park capital of the Southern Hemisphere is a place that celebrates all things aquatic. From sharks to polar bears and some pretty hair raising rides, this place has it all. But don't forget, you can't scream underwater. SeaWorld, it's all about life in the sea. By this stage in our adventure, we were starting to like the idea of getting wet. So straight into the water we went. This time at Shark Bay, a place where you can swim with around 65 of the world's most impressive marine creatures. There are black tip reef sharks, hammerheads, and a whole variety of coral reef fish. SeaWorld also holds daily seal and dolphin shows. Trainers work with the seals and dolphins, teaching them different behaviors and maneuvers. While the seals play games and tricks with the actors, the dolphins sometimes try their own stunts and even give the trainer a bit of help from time to time. Getting to know a dolphin or receiving a wet, sloppy kiss from a frisky sea lion is definitely a memorable experience. Well, we've had action, adventure, close encounters with nature's finest and one adrenaline overload after another. I think we're going to have to take it easy for a while, but we'll catch you next episode when we'll probably do it all again. <laughs> Travel